Markel. Markel. Okay. Yeah, okay. But, right. but, but, but with a Q E, but it's, 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 it's pronounced with a K. Markel. I think I'm not taking. That's a different interview. And yeah. you just look at this. Okay. I, I, got, well, I, I wondered. I'm about to say we've had that for.
Wallace. He is huge with that. Yeah. He is. And they have a second baseman named Wallace, too. Takari Wallace. Yeah. And he played, but there's three guys on there from Varsity that played JV. Okay. Zakari. McDonald. And. Wasn't it McDonald? Did yeah, I see his name? seventh grade. That's what it was. Uh, Autry, the number 13. He's seventh grade. Takari <laughs> Wallace. Oh, really? Zakari Wall Wallace is seventh grade? He's talking about 14 years old. <laughs> Today? Yeah. Jarvis Woody. Yeah, yeah. Eight grade on the mound. Okay. Yeah. Going to his brother. James. I can't say J. Wallace or J.A. Wallace. I got to write it in That's my right. school book the same out. way. I mean, got to write the full first name. Oh, yeah. I won't get it right. People do like for you to get get their names right, don't we? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're right. We all do. <laughs> Never good when you say their names and you hit a dugout laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you don't need to do that. You know, you better run off those. It's a little late for my son. But then they all start calling him what you got. Yeah, that's pretty good bad. Yeah. You talking about that the other night? They said they called that Campbell Blaine was called Camp Bell. Oh, Camp Bell. Camp Bell. Camp Bell. Wow. Because they called her Camp Bell, so they, they all started hollering. Let's go Camp Bell. Well, you would think Campbell. That's a pretty common name. Right. Camp Bell Blaine. Camp Bell. This is my now my favorite Louisville moment. It was from football season when we played over there. It was their senior night, and the guy on the PA said, uh, "All the we're about to have our senior night festivities. We'd like all the families of the seniors to go to the north end zone at this time." And after about thirty seconds or a minute, he gets back on and says, uh, "That's the end with the scoreboard." <laughs> People were looking up there going like, who am I, Magellan? Christopher Columbus? I don't know. Sounds like he had a compass out. Yeah. Oh, that's I got Lee Burrell's number, so. All right, we'll burn him up. First phone call that you saw back. It was outside. His number, no, what I'm going to say, his number is. Right. Eric 662. All right. He said they had to be escorted to the car last night. He said they gave him the warning three times. He said they gave him the warning three times. He said they gave him the warning three times. He said they gave him the warning three times. He said they gave him the warning three times. He said they gave him the warning three times. He said they gave him Wow. <laughs> he said, that's a little hot. How do you get that school just dark? Oh, I see flight back. Check. Check one, two. Check one, two. See if that's. Check one, two, check one, two. Check one, two.
<laughs> All right. Yeah, Donald, I think uh, I had to reset the audio. I think it was just capturing audio off the computer when it when the, I turned the computer when the computer came back live. So we should be good coming off the headset now. I hope it sounds nice and clear. When this thing resets, it it's resets to pick that up because I had everything down over here. I had everything down. I'll be more careful. I'll be careful. All Boswell Media Sports. It's time for Kosciuszko Whippet Baseball on Breezy 101, the Breezy 101 mobile app and streaming live at breezynews.com. Click on the Listen Live tab on the right-hand side of the screen for the audio stream of today's ball game. And there's also the Pickles Drugstore video feed. Link to that is available for you at breezynews.com. Welcome to the fairgrounds. And Philip Palmer Tree here in the press box. We've got baseball today as the Whippets take on a 5A opponent, the Ridgeland Titans. Already had a JV game here. And the teams are loosening up and getting ready for first pitch in just a couple of minutes at the top of the hour. The Whippets are 8-4 and four on the season. Perfect 5-0 and region uh, record in Region 4 play. But uh, the toughest part of the schedule lies ahead with Northeast Lauderdale next week and then two games with West Lauderdale after that, but uh, you can only play them one at a time. And today it's the Titans of Ridgeland 
as we welcome you into the Wendy's pregame show. In just a minute, we'll have your Itala County Bank starting lineups, but we'll tell you about uh, the opponent today, Ridgeland Titans, coached by Chris Peden. They are 10-7 and seven on the year. They've been able to get quite a few more ball games in than the Whippets have, and they're a perfect 4-0 and oh in their region. Now, that does re require or deserve a little bit of qualification. Just in this, uh, they are they're, they're not facing uh, the best competition they face uh, in their region. They're playing some of the Jackson schools where baseball's not as emphasized in their region. They've got Callaway and Provine. They've also got Vicksburg in their region. But, uh, but they're an every year playoff ball club. And they played the Whippets uh, on and off some through the past few years. And have been some close ball games between the Whippets and the Titans. We'll talk a little bit later about the recent history of this series between Ridgeland and Kosciuszko. Also today, we'll be trying to keep up with Whippet softball. The ladies are playing next door. A doubleheader today with Cenotopia, one of the outstanding programs in North Mississippi, has made the long ride down I-55 and then down 35 and paying a visit to the Lady Whippets at the softball field. So there's a lot going on at the Itala County Fairgrounds. You may be out and about with picking 35 or just enjoying this spring day, but we're glad you're along with us for today's ball game. The Whippets uh, last time out were in Louisville on a cold Tuesday night, but it was successful as the Whippets completed a two game sweep of the old rivals. The Whippets beating Louisville 12 to two at Ivy Park Sports Complex in Louisville. They got five in the top of the first and never let up, ended up winning 12-2. Got two runs uh, across the plate to the Wildcats in the bottom of the fifth, and that's when the game was called. At, uh, after that inning ended, it was uh, 12 runs on 12 hits and an error for the Whippets. Two runs on one hit, three errors for Louisville. Our Autumn Ridge Dental player of the game back on Tuesday night was junior Ethan Wood. He pitched a five-inning complete game through 93 pitches, and 57% of his pitches were strikes. He gave up just the one hit, and that was to the leadoff batter in the bottom of the first. Gave up two runs, but struck out 13 and walked five in the ball game the other night. So an outstanding performance by Ethan Wood with 13 Holmes Community College strikeouts on Tuesday night. The Whippets were here on Tuesday afternoon for the first game of that series, and that one was a laugher, 20-3 uh, against Louisville, an 11-run bottom of the first inning. Led the, led the Whippets to that easy victory. So the Whippets have Leak Central and Louisville in the rearview mirror in division play, but as I mentioned a moment ago, Northeast Lauderdale and West Lauderdale ahead. Games against the Trojans Tuesday at Meridian and Friday back here at home next week. So those will be two pivotal ball games, and of course, Basel Media Sports will be bringing you that action uh, on audio only for Tuesday night, and then back here for audio and video at home on Friday. Well, our field conditions, weather report presented by Itala County Farm Bureau. And uh, I don't know if Itala County Farm Bureau had anything to do with it, but if they did, they're to be complimented for ordering up a beautiful spring afternoon, early, uh, low 60s, about 62 degrees, under sunny skies and some south-southeast wind at about six miles per hour, blowing uh, out toward right. A flag in center field is at half staff in honor of the uh, Capitol Police officer who was killed in the line of duty yesterday in the in Washington, D.C. But that flag is up and just uh, flapping a little bit, not a strong wind going out toward right field. We've got low humidity today and lots of sunshine, good crowd expected out here for both baseball and softball. Ridgeland coach Chris Peters, uh, Peters uh, excuse me, Peden, and Whippets head coach Derek Boland are at home plate with the two-man umpiring crew exchanging lineup cards, and we'll be getting started in just a minute. Ridgeland 
is in black tops with white pants, black caps. They've got Ridgeland in a classic cursive script on the top of their, on the front of their uniforms, white numerals, all of it trimmed in light blue. And they've got a sharp look and a good contrast with the Whippets wearing what's coming to be the standard uh, home uniform this season, and that's the, the maroon tops with the white sleeve and the big striped KHS across the front with the white pants, maroon stirrup socks, maroon hats with a white trucker panel and KHS across the front. Coach Bolin talking with the umpires over some of the ground rules and uh, maybe some things that happened during the, the earlier uh, JV game that may uh, everybody may need to be aware of. But we're just going to get started in just a minute. Looks like we may be a couple of minutes past 1 o'clock getting started. We'll go ahead and move into our uh, Atala County Bank starting lineup. We'll start out for the Ridgeland Titans at 10 and 7 and 4 and 0 in their district region, uh, region 4 of 5A. They'll start out with senior Markel Thompson playing in center field and leading off. He's batting 333 on the year with a home run. Batting second, a sophomore at third base, Montrevious Wynn, who bats 300. Richard Mays bats third and plays short. He's hitting 211 on the season. James Woody is the sophomore catcher. He'll be in the cleanup spot, and he's hitting 400 on the season to lead the ball club so far. Jarvis Woody, his brother, is an eighth grader, and he'll be pitching. So it'll be James Woody at catcher, Jarvis Woody on the mound. Jarvis Woody swings a good bat as well. He's hitting 350 on the season. Jalen Braden, excuse me, Jalen Borden is a senior first baseman, and he'll bat sixth. He's hitting 333. He's also got one home run on the season. The bottom three in the order, Dakari Wallace at second base, batting 385. Zakari McDonald, a sophomore in left field, batting 222. And rounding it out in the ninth spot, a sophomore right fielder, Kyle Carter, who's hitting at 071. So for Ridgeland Thompson, Wynn Mays, James Woody, Jarvis Woody, Borden, Wallace McDonald, and Carter. That's the Itala County Bank starting lineup for the visitors. Now for your Kosciuszko Whippets, Kalen Powell Jr. will lead off, and he'll be in left field. Kalen leads the team in a lot of offensive categories here on the season, including uh, stolen bases. Kalen batting 556 on the year. Larson Fancher, the designated hitter, will bat second. Larson's hitting 269 on the season. Ethan Wood in the three spot. He's in right field today. Ethan, the junior, hitting 323 with two home runs. Now, Nolan Ewell bats cleanup, and the utility man is plugged into left field today. Nolan Ewell batting 375 on the season, and he's tied for the team lead in triples. Parker Riles bats fifth and plays over at third. The junior, Parker Riles is hitting an even 400 on the campaign. Batting sixth, Riley Patton. He'll be at first base again, hitting 240 on the season and is second on the team in walks. Ty Ramage in the seventh spot. He'll be behind the plate. Ty is batting 270 on the year. He's driven in five runs, hit four doubles. Will Carter is the pitcher today. He'll be on the mound and batting eight. At the plate, Will's hitting 324. Has scored seven runs. And Landon Wallace will be in the nine spot in the order. Landon's had limited plate appearances, hitting 250 on the season. And then Jacob Nunn will be at shortstop, but not in the batting order. So for the Whippets, Powell, Fancher, Wood, Ewell, Riles, Patton, Ty Ramage, Will Carter, and Landon Wallace. Jacob Nunn at short. Teams have been introduced. Take down the field, and All we'll right, step aside now five. as we have the prayer national anthem national back in two minutes on Boswell Media Sports. A better tomorrow starts today with Wendy's breakfast. A tomorrow that says they can, not they can't. Where fresh eggs rain like opportunity, honey butter goodness is spread, and the frosty is chinoed. At Wendy's, we don't ask what tomorrow holds, but rather, what will you hold tomorrow? 
Will it be the breakfast baconator or the honey butter chicken biscuit? No matter what you choose, tomorrow's looking good. At participating U.S. Wendy's. Hey, I'm Ryder Davis with Farm Bureau. As a young insurance agent, it hasn't taken me long to understand the value of life insurance. Even at an early age, life is unpredictable and it is important that your life is properly insured. With age and good health, there is never a better time to get life insurance than when you're young. Whether you're married or living on your own, someone you love is responsible for you. Life is not guaranteed, but our life insurance is. Call me, text me, or come see me today at Farm Bureau on the Square in Kosciuszko. You can now bank closer to home at Atala County Bank. Hi, this is David Blair with Atala County Bank. I have been serving the people of Atala County with commercial, mortgage, and personal loans for 25 years. Please come see me at Atala County Bank. I look forward to serving you. Atala County Bank, in the North Side Shopping Center next to Sullivan's in Kosciuszko. Call 290-6963. Hometown banking in your hometown. Member FDIC at Equal Housing Lender. Still serving the people of Holmes and Carroll Counties, Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Atala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Nothing like afternoon baseball under sunny skies, and that's what we have at the fairgrounds today. Will Carter is getting in his final warm-up tosses. Will's making his fourth appearance of the season, first start in the record book. Will's pitched 10 innings, has a record of one and one on the season. He's given up seven hits, six runs, but just three of them have been earned. He has struck out six and walked six, hit three batters. His ERA 2.10. Whippets as a staff have a 3.37 ERA. And that has been a consistent strength of the ball club. Uh, not a lot of arms, but the arms that are put out there have been putting out quality performances. And we expect that from Will Carter this afternoon. Top of the first inning coming up here. And Ridgeland's going to send to the plate. Markel Thompson, Montravius Wynn, and Richard Mays. Whippet ladies are playing softball next door. We'll try to keep you updated on that. They just got started against Senatobia. And the JV action earlier here at the ballpark, Kosciuszko defeated Ridgeland in JV action nine to four. So fast pitch in baseball, that's the sum total of the athletics schedule today for Kosciuszko. Now batting for the Titans, number five, Markel. So now Markel Thompson is announced and called to the plate. He'll stand in the right-handed batter's box, face Will Carter. We're going to get started first pitch here at 106 as Carter from the stretch throws a pitch that just misses downstairs for ball one. 1-0 one to Thompson. 3.33 on the season. His batting average, he has stroked a home run. Carter's 1-0 pitch catches the outside corner for strike one. One ball, one strike. Carter comes set. Now the pitch. In on the hands, and it bounces in front of the plate. Ramage is going to get it on the grass. They'll have to make a quick throw, and the out is recorded. And Thompson ran into the left arm of Patton down at first, but everybody's okay. Close play. Good job by the catcher, Ramage, to... Get on top of that ball that was hit off the fist just about a foot in front of the place where the grass and the dirt meet. And that's one away in the first inning. 
First inning of Whippet Baseball is presented by the Itala County Co-op. The batter's Montravius win. Carter starts him off with a pitch that's down and away. One ball, no strikes. Right-hander comes set to the plate. Came inside. Nearly hit him. Two balls, no strikes. Last year, Will Carter was a backup at catcher. This year, he's been employed in left field and called on to pitch some. There's that outside corner fast ball. Two balls and a strike. This wind didn't want to swing at it, but the umpire said strike one. Here's Carter's 2-1 pitch. Lined foul, out of play right side. That makes it two and two. Carter started him off 2-0. and oh. Now the count's even. He'll step off the rubber for a moment. Some ramage needed to adjust that catcher's gear a little bit. Now we're ready to go. He gets his sign. 2-2 two -two pitch. Hit right back up the middle. Landon Wallace to his right, scoots it up, scoops up long throw, and the umpire says that win beat it out. Ball was not hit nah, all that hard, but it was hit uh, back towards second. Wallace had a distance to go to get it, and Montrevious win beats out the throw for an infield single. Richard Mays, the shortstop, will bat now. With a runner at first and one out. Right on right matchup. Carter wants to throw over to first, and win back in there on his on his stomach. Close play. Wynn takes his lead at first. Here's the pitch. Left up, ball one. Third straight batter that Carter started off with a ball. On the stretch, he throws over to first. This time, Wynn is back in plenty of time. Mays is a senior on this Titan ball club. Runner taking off. Pitch comes inside, and there'll be no throw. Stolen base. Martravius Wynn. Runner in scoring position for Ridgeland. We're in the top of the first inning. Two balls, no strikes, the count. Check of the runner again. And now the pitch. Fouled straight back at the screen. Two and one to Mays. Carter comes set. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, swung on, miss, strike two. So once again, Carter gets back to two and two. Win the base runner at second. He got on with an infield single. And that pitch wild out of the, comes off the backstop right back to Ramage. Win's going to get third base on the wild pitch. Runner at third now for the Titans. Three and two the count. Carter fires it in, fouled off toward the softball field. Mays got the bat out on that one just late. Stays alive at three and two.
3-2 pitch, and he walked him. Ball was left upstairs. Now batting number eight. So now that puts Dang. runners at the corners for Ridgeland. With one out in the top of the first, cleanup hitter James Woody comes to the plate. Woody is the team leader in batting average for the Titans. Just a sophomore. Looks confident in the batter's box. He has four triples and five doubles on the season. Pitch way up. And once again, Carter starts off the hitter with ball one. Checks the runners at first and at third. Now time called by Woody. Keeps one foot in the batter's box now. Gets them both in. Gets ready. Right-handed hitter. Ready for Carter's pitch. 1-0. Runner at first taking off. Now they've got him hung up. Runner at third taking off as Carter throws it over the head of Wallace into short center, shallow center field. And Wynn's going to get home. Going to be able to steal home on that. Carter was anticipating stolen base opportunity there, but then Things didn't work out so well. Give Mays a stolen base. I think you got to give Wynn the stolen base, too. I think he was going to get it. He was taking off right when the throw came. A 2-0 now to Woody. Runner at second. Ridgeland one. Kosciuszko nothing. Still just one out in the inning. Runner taken off. Mays will get third easily. Slides in before Ramage's throw arrives in Ryle's glove, and time is called. Coach Boland wants to talk to Will Carter. Ridgeland coming out and putting pressure on the whipping infield defense with aggressive base running. Markel Thompson started out the inning with a ground out in front of the plate, and Wynn beat out an infield single. Stole second, got third on a wild pitch, and then Mays walked. That gave him first and third, and then they successfully executed a, I guess what you'd call the double delayed steal with first and third, and that got win across the plate. Now Mays is down at third. Boland has completed his instructions to Carter and Ramage. Counts two balls and a strike to James Woody. Mays the runner at third. Carter gets set, fires it. Fastball up, ball three. James Woody's brother Jarvis Woody is in the on-deck circle for the Titans. Carter's got business here, 3-1 pitch. Missed down and in, and he walked him. Second walk of the inning. Second consecutive walk. Now, batting for the Titans, number 10. So Jarvis here's Jarvis Woody. Woody. Eighth grader, but no slouch at the plate. 350 batting average. He's driven in eight runs, has a couple of doubles. First and third again, throw to first. Back in on all fours is James Woody. He's running for himself. Carter looks in, comes set, throws to first again, but once again, Woody's in, back in the base. Top of the first inning, Ridgeland has pushed one run across, have first and third with one out. Another throw to first. Carter very conscious of Woody over there at first. 
He's got another runner at third. And Richard Mays, runner first taken off. Ramage will cock his arm back but won't throw. They'll surrender the stolen base there for Woody. Don't want Mays to come across the plate. Another stolen base in this inning for the Titans. They are playing small ball and executing it well. Only one ball put in play so far. 0-1 pitch outside, ball two. One ball, one strike to Jarvis Woody. Runners at second and third. Carter needs an out. Pitch, chopped straight down, fouled off the plate. Two balls, two strikes now. Everybody back in and set again. Kick and the delivery. He check swing, and did he go around? I think he did. Home plate umpire wants uh, an opinion from his infield partner, and he says he did not go around, says he checked it. I don't know about that. Let's see if it's two, two. It's two and two. I think I said I was incorrectly said it was two and two earlier, so it's two and two now. Here's the pitch. Check swing, struck him out. Holmes Community College strikeout. For Will Carter, and boy, did the Whippets need that. Now, batting number 34. Now you just went out away from getting out of the inning, leaving a couple of men on. We'll see what Jalen Borden will do when he comes to the plate. That is going to be a courtesy runner in for Ridgeland. It's going to be, it's going to be Caleb Johnson now running for Woody at second. Pitch, a high strike, called. Borden took one right at the top of the zone, 0 and 1. Borden, a right handed hitter as well. All righty so far for Ridgeland. Carter's 0 1 pitch is way outside, blocked up, but then it squirts away from the catcher, and the run will score from third. Mays comes across. That ball was way off the plate, hit in the dirt in the left-handed batter's box, and Ramage did all he could do to backhand it, block it up, but it scooted on him up toward the first baseline, and that will result in the run scoring. Two-nothing now, Titans. Ball hit in the air to the gap in left center field. That's going to get down for extra bases. It will hit, bounce once, and hit off the wall. Powell will throw it in. None will get it. That's an RBI double. For Borden to make it 3 0 Ridgeland. Nice stroke, nice easy looking stroke. Put it out in the gap in left center field. It was a one hopper to the wall. Now it's the number seven hitter, Dakari Wallace. He's swinging first pitch, lines it foul into the net, right above the on deck circle. 0-1 to Wallace. Both ball clubs starting a Wallace at second base. This is Dakari Wallace, a Ridgeland right-handed hitter. Carter's 0-1 pitch, fouled straight back, 0-2 now. But Wallace up there, swinging. He's hitting 385 on the year. That seven spot has a couple of triples. 0-2 pitch down low. Good pitch. Good take. One and two. Dakari Wallace just in seventh grade. Hits one to the opposite side and scooped up by Landon Wallace. Throws over to Patton to retire the side. On the inning, 
three runs on two hits, no errors, and a runner left on base. Got things started here, top of the first. And a three spot up for Ridgeland. They score three in the top of the first, and the Whippets will be coming to bat in the bottom of the second. We'll bring you that after we step aside for this break. You're listening to Kosciuszko Whippet Baseball on Saturday afternoon on Boswell Media Sports. You've changed thousands of diapers, played peekaboo, and duck duck goose for hours. Yep. Because you do anything for your kids. That's why it's so important to protect them with life insurance from State Farm. State yep. Farm agent Angel Alvin McDonald will help make it easy and affordable to help protect your family no matter what the future holds. That's because right. for the people you do anything for, life insurance can mean everything. Call State Farm agent Angel Alvin McDonald in Kosciuszko, Mississippi today. Like good a good day. neighbor, State Farm is there. 662-289-3161. Y'all have a good one now. Are you tired of being turned down by the other guy? Turn down for what? Come to Lindsay's Auto Sales because we will not turn you down for credit here. Turn down for what? Lindsay's Auto Sales, low down payments and low monthly notes. Turn down for what? Kosciuszko and Ackerman. Boswell Media Sports. <laughs> Back at the fairgrounds, and we start the bottom of the first inning. Ridgeland put up three in the visitor's half of the first, and now we'll see what the Whippets will do, and they'll have to get done whatever they get done against an eighth grader on the mound, Jarvis Woody, who is, has pitched 25 innings on the season for the uh, Ridgeland Titans. He's 2-0 on the season, making his eighth appearance, ERA 3.36. He's given up 26 hits, just 12 earned runs, struck out 21 and walked 10. Opponents are hitting 271 on Jarvis Woody. First whip at ill face is the center fielder, Landon Powell. Excuse me, Kalen Powell. Right-hander fires it in, called strike. Mason Kalen Powell, who's still hitting above 500, even after a little going a little below par on uh, Tuesday evening, counts now one and one. One one pitch. Hard hit right at the left fielder, and he's going to have to try to backhand it. Won't get it. It'll go to the wall. Landon Powell, uh, Kalen Powell at second. He'll make a turn and come back. And the Whippets get things started in the bottom of the first with an extra base hit. Hard hit line drive to left. The left fielder had to go to his right to get it, tried to backhand it, just couldn't quite get to it. Bottom of the first inning. Whippets have a runner in scoring position now. First inning of Whippet Baseball presented by the Itala County Co-op. Left-handed hitting Larson Fancher in the on deck in the batter's box now. Woods, Woody's pitch, strike on the outside corner. That was Kalen Powell's team leading sixth double of the season. Woody looking back in that direction, now to the plate. Leaves it out for ball one. Ball and a strike to Fancher. Larson Fancher was one out of three the other night in Louisville. Open stance in that left-handed batter's box and pitches up and away. Two balls and a strike. Hitters count now for Larson Fancher. Woody should be conscious of Kalen Powell at second. He's only 16 out of 16 in stolen base attempts this year. 2-1 on the way. Lined into right center field. will get out for a base hit. Powell will be held up at third. Center fielder. Thompson got, got to it quickly. 
Got it into the infield, but the Whippets have something going with runners at the corners and nobody now, out. Maddie, number 16, Ethan Wood. Good piece of hit by Fancher. Didn't try to do too much with it and ended up with a nice uh, just dropping it nicely into shallow right center field. So Ethan Wood has the opportunity now to put the Whippets on the scoreboard in the bottom of the first. Nobody out, runners at first and third. Richland put up three in the top of the first, and the Whippets are looking to answer. From the stretch, Woody to the plate, high fastball. Couldn't lay off of it. Wood swings and misses for strike one. Quick throw over to first, and Fancher's back. Powell at third, Fancher at first. No balls and a strike to count to Ethan Wood. Right-hander delivers, and it's popped up foul back out of play. Ethan Wood is in the hole. No balls and two strikes. Powell standing about even with the bag at third. Just getting himself a quick start and spoiling that 0-2 pitch as Wood sends it back out of play. Still nothing in two. Woody steps off the rubber, looks at Fancher at first. Fancher takes his lead. Powell's going to wait till the motion starts. And here's called strike three on the outside corner for out number one. Wood goes down on strikes. Now batting number one, Nolan Ewell. Nolan Ewell will hit now. Nolan had a two-hit night against Louisville on Tuesday, going two for four, scored two runs. Also stole two bases. First and third, one out. Pitch to Ewell. Bouncer to third. Third baseman's going to fire it to the plate, and the throw is offline. Powell will slide in safely. It's on the first base side of the bag, and everybody will move up. Ewell reaches on the fielder's choice, then gets second on the error, charge the error on the throw. gets himself up to third. Time, no, not, I thought I heard timeout. Time is not called. It's three to one now. Whippets have runners at second and third. Parker Riles will hit now. The ball down in the dirt. Good job by James Woody to back it up. James Woody, the catcher. Jarvis Woody, the pitcher. If I can get it right 50% of the time, I'll be doing well. Woody from the stretch, 1-0 pitch. This is down 2-0. Riles keeping his eyes open there. Two balls, no strikes. Shortstop watching that bag. He throws a breaking ball, taken for a strike. Two and one. Riles awaiting the pitch from Woody. Here it is. Hit on the left side of the infield. It will get through for a base hit. Fancher scores to make it three to two. RBI single for Parker Riles. Now, batting number four. Moving up to third is Yule. Just one out in the inning, and Riley Patton get into the left-handed batter's box. Second lefty in the Whippets batting order. Whippets trail 3-2, but still a lot in play here. Runners at the corners with just one out. Woody's pitch hit towards short. Chance for two. Toss to second. 
throw over to thir first is, is uh, I think he got the first baseman off the bag. So the out was not recorded at first. They get, they get Riles on the force. Six to four for out number two, but Ewell scores from third and makes it a tie ball game, 3-3. Three, three. Coach Peden wants to come out and make sure he understood what the infield umpire called. There are two outs, Pat and safe on the fielder's choice. The hitter is Ty Ramage. See if he can keep things going with two out and a runner at first. But the score is now tied 3-3. Woody's fastball is off the plate outside. Ty Ramage, a 270 hitter. Adding seventh today. Here's the 1-0 pitch taken for a strike right down the middle. Whippets have not gone deep in count so far. They've been swinging the bat, putting it in play. There it is, a ball hit down the line. It's going to get past the third baseman and roll into the left field corner. Patton will get in standing at second. And with a double down the line, the inning will continue. Good hit there by Ty Ramage, two bagger. Fourth base hit of the inning for the whip. It's Cooper Black coming in to courtesy run for Ramage. Will Carter, eighth man to the plate in the inning. 3-3 three, three ball game, two out, runners second and third, bottom of inning number one. We've got action from the start at the fairgrounds. Carter hits it on the ground to short, scooped up. Mays makes the throw to Borden. Retires Carter on one pitch to end the inning. But a successful answer by the Whippets in the top, excuse me, the bottom of the first inning. Three runs on four hits, including two doubles in the inning. One error and a runner left on, excuse me, two men left on base. So one complete. Whippets three, Titans three. Back after this with the top of the second inning on Boswell Media Sports. From the classroom to the athletic playing field, Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first-class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Boswell Media Sports. We hope you're enjoying the video stream presented by Pickles Drugstore. Our Pickles Drugstore audio stream available at breezynews.com. This game also available on the Breezy mobile app and, of course, on 101.1 on your FM dial, Breezy 101. On a beautiful 62-degree afternoon. Whippets and the Ridgeland Titans meet on Saturday afternoon, and it's three runs apiece after one frame. Will Carter will face Zakari McDonald, the number eight hitter. Kyle Carter, the number nine hitter. And then we'll go back to the top of the order, Markel Thompson. With the visitors in black tops, white pants, everything trimmed in sky blue. Ridgeland Titans. And here's Zakari McDonald. Sophomore played in left field. Today, right-handed hitter, all righties so far. He showed bunt. Fastball was down and away, ball one. Start things off in the second. Good day to be out for baseball. Good day to be out for softball. The Lady Whippets next door are playing the Senatobia Warriors in a doubleheader. Ball hit 
bounces uh, foul just in front of the first base bag. Hit that one off his fist up the line. Well, for a moment, that was going to stay fair over the bag. One ball, one strike to McDonald. Carter comes set. Here's the 1-1, one, one. showing bunt, bunts it up the first base side. Carter gets it with his glove and gets it over to Patton and beats McDonald by a step. Good job by Carter. Had to go about halfway toward the first base now bag to get that one. bunt. Carter. That's out number one. Now up in the second, uh, Kyle Carter, number nine hitter. Second inning of Whippet Baseball presented to you by Renaissance Insurance. Fastball that's up and lined back out of play. Strike one to Carter. Carter comes set. 0-1. Oh, had to throw that one in the right-handed batter's box and probably would have been taken for a hit by pitch for Carter if he hadn't been crouched in a bunt position there. Instead, it went more or less behind him, ball one. Get a new baseball. Ready to resume play. Carter's 1-1 one, one on its way. Roll to short. Up with it is Jacob Nunn, and he throws. Good stretch there by Patton to make sure he didn't have to dig it out of the dirt. And they're two away. Now, as Carter's five, retired, 6-3 for out number two. Here's Markel Thompson, who sort of nubbed one out in front of the plate to start the game. Ty Ramage threw down to first for the put out, first out of the ball game. Starts off looking at a pitch that's down and away, ball one. On the top of the second inning, both teams put up three spot in the first inning. That one fouled straight down. Bounced off the plate and then up off the left upper arm of Thompson. That evens the count at a ball and a strike. Carter comes set, works from the stretch, even when the bases are empty as they are now. There's a breaking ball just missed. Upstairs ball two. We'll be taking the trip to Meridian on uh, Tuesday, 7 o'clock starting time for the Whippets and the Northeast Lauderdale Trojans. That one, fastball up and in, ball three. Three balls and a strike to Thompson. Carter fires it in off the plate. He walked him. That's the third walk that Carter's given up in this ball game. That gives the Titans a two-out base runner in the top of the second. Montravius Wynn got an infield single. Start the action for Ridgeland in the first. He's Stole two bases. Ended up getting the first run across. Runner taken off on the first pitch, and the throw from Ramage will be up. Safe at second with a stolen base is Thompson. Thompson is now 10 out of 13 in stolen bases on the season. Called strike on the outside corner to even the count at one and one. Good pitch there from Will Carter. Wynn chops it, bounces foul left side. We'll do it again here. Well, that's not, excuse me, that's strike two. One ball, two strikes. Carter just a strike away from getting out of the inning here. Leaving a goose egg on the scoreboard for Ridgeland. And Carter steps off the rubber, looks Thompson back to the bag at second. 
Now he puts his right foot on the rubber, looks in for the side from Ramage, checks the runner, a one-two, kick and delivery, runner taken off, and it's one hopper bounces in front of Ramage. He blocks it up with a chest protector. But Thompson is now at third. He was stealing on that one all the way. Two balls, two strikes, the count. And Ridgeland has been aggressive on the base paths this afternoon. Paid off for him in the first. Now they've got a runner at third after a two-out walk. 2-2 pitch. Smacked on the ground. Third, Riles up with it on the grass. Throws. And good job by Patton. He had to go up to his left to get that ball as the runner was coming across. And they retire win by about a step and a half for out number three. So on the inning in the second. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left on base. Middle of the second. Kosciuszko three. Richland three. More Whippet Baseball after this on Boswell Media Sports. Tax season often brings about stress and anxiety. When you want to make sure your personal and business finances are well taken care of, trust the experts at Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. Kenny Dungan and staff can ease your mind when it comes to financial questions. If you have questions or concerns about changing tax laws, Watkins, Ward, and Stafford will make sure you understand these laws and how they directly impact you or your business. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford leading their clients through the next generation of change. South Natchez Street in Kosciuszko. It starts as a trickle, then the sill on the pipe gives way, and you've got a mess on your hands. Keep the damage out by calling SurfPro of Northeast Delta Lands, 289-7473. That's where you'll find a team of cleanup specialists with proven experience, equipment, and training needed to make sure your property is repaired right the first time. Because when water damage strikes your home or business, you don't want to risk more damage by attempting to do the cleanup yourself. Working to help make fire and water damage like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Boswell Media Sports. Landon Wallace leads off the whip at second inning. Left-handed hitter looks at a pitch from Woody that's outside for ball one. Woody ready, works from the wind up. And just like the first one, his second one way off outside, ball two. And that pitch hit into left center field. It'll get down between the, the outfielders and a base hit for Wallace to start off the second. Good solid contact, put it right in the gap before either the left fielder or center fielder could get there. And the Whippets have the leadoff man on in the second in a game that's tied 3-3. Here's Kalen Powell. Powell doubled in the second. Ended up scoring on a ball hit on the ground by Nolan Ewell. Throw is over to first. Wallace back in on all fours in plenty of time. Powell has six doubles a year. That's twice as many, almost twice as many as Ty Ramage has. Now it's one ball and no strikes to Powell. Powell ready, right-handed hitter, right-handed pitcher. Here's the 1-0, foul straight back. One ball, one strike. Now the counts two and one. Ball was down. Throw over to first. Back in plenty of time is Landon Wallace. 
Two and one the count. Here's the pitch. It's a high fastball that Powell popped out of play. Two and two now. Working now from the stretch is Jarvis Woody. To the plate, reaching out for it and knocking it through the hole on the left side of the infield is Powell for a single. He's two for two. Wallace pulls up at second. Now two men are on with nobody out. Larson Fancher singled and scored in the first. A couple of days ago, Whippet softball got a 5-4 to four victory over Choctaw Central. Come from behind fashion. To the plate, bunted back toward the mound, first base side. Woody up with it. Gets the out at first, but the runners will move up to second and third. Fancher successfully executes the sacrifice bunt. He's retired one to three for out number one. Number 16, Ethan Wood. The, Wood. the runners get into scoring position. That sets things up for Ethan Wood. Wood struck out looking in the first. And a strike taken on the outside corner. Start things off to Wood. We were up here recently for a home game. I think it was the home game against Leak Central. Softball was playing next door. Whippet softball player, freshman Leia Harmon, got injured. We'll give you an update on her in a minute. Ball bounces down in front of the catcher. He blocks it up. No chance for base runners to advance, but that's ball one. Layla Harmon had knee surgery yesterday after suffering that injury. That knee repair ended up being more complicated than expected and keeping her in our thoughts and our prayers. One and one, pitch left away, ball two. Like early in the week, the Whippet softballers got doubleheader wins Tuesday against Northeast Lauderdale and Leak Central. Fastball in on the hands and swing and a miss. Strike two. Two balls, two strikes to Wood. Eighth grader on the mound comes set. The pitch outside and the count goes full. So Woody and Wood battling here in the top of the second. Second inning presented by Renaissance Insurance. Here's the 3-2 pitch. And he struck him out swinging. Second time this afternoon that Ethan Wood has struck out. They're two away now, runners second and third. It'll be up to Nolan Ewell. Now batting number one, Nolan Ewell. Right on right matchup. Woody gets the sign from his brother. Now to the plate. Taken up, ball one. Nolan Ewell's played a lot of positions this year. Corners of the outfield. Bennett short, Bennett third. Hits one. Up, up in the air, shallow right center field. Sun could make it tough, and it's going to get behind the first baseman. Both runs will score. Well, that was a tough play in the sun. Just in shallow right field, both the right fielder charging in and then the first now, baseman, second Andrew baseman Levi. going after it. First baseman looked to have it, best shot at it, but then it just went a little bit behind him, and that's going to get down and score two runs and make it 5-3 with its throw comes over to first. I can even get any of this down in the scorebook. 
It's hard to. And then the throw to first, another throw to first gets past the first baseman and goes off the fence. That'll be a, a base for Yule. Charge an error there to the pitcher. A couple of errors on the inning. I'm going to score that uh, Yule hit, or Yule reach as an error on the third baseman. Sun was tough, but uh, certainly he's playable. He was wearing shades. Had teammates coming in there. That was a, it's a tough error to give. That'll be the third error of the inning. I mean, of the ball game for the Titans. Coach Peden talking to his pitcher alone. And now Ridgeland head coach. Walks back to the first base dugout. We've got a runner at second base now with two out. Still haven't thrown a pitch to Parker Riles. He's in the back of the right-hand batter's box. Woody from the stretch. Now comes set. Checks the runner. Here's the pitch. That was a fastball right down Main Street for strike one. The inning... Excuse me, the inning started with single from Landon Wallace in the left center, and then Powell knocked one through the hole on the left side. Bancher advanced those two runners with a sack bunt. Wood struck out, and then Ewell popped one into shallow right center field that got down for the, both runs came in. That ball left up two and one. Excuse me, one and one. One and one to Parker Riles. Here's Woody's 1-1 one, one pitch. Now he's going to throw back to second, and he throws it into, into center field, but the center fielder there on top of it quickly to back, backing it up. Yule was diving back into the bag. Still one and one. Riles waits for the pitch. Here it comes. Hit on the ground right to the third baseman. And he will throw across to retire Parker Riles to end the Whippets half of the third inning. Excuse me, second inning. Two runs, two hits, two errors, and a man left on base. Middle of the second, Kosciuszko has taken the lead. They lead Richland after one and a half, was even after two complete. Score, Whippets five, Titans three. Back with more Whippet baseball after this on Boswell Media Sports. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi. I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency in Kosciuszko, knowing the customer and their individual needs is what we pride ourselves on. We know how important it is for everyone to have the peace of mind that your insurance coverages are tailored for you. Our team recognizes your life and your unique needs. That is why we provide you with numerous insurance options, an easy claim process, and personal attention that is second to none, all at one location without breaking the bank. Call us today at 662-289-1024 or visit us at 235 North Madison Street off the square in Kosciuszko. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency, we guarantee the right fit for you and all of your insurance needs. Boswell Media Sports. Five runs on six hits now, through two Whippets innings for Richard the Whippets. Please. Three runs on two hits for the Titans. Top of the third coming up now. This one will send Richard Mays, James Woody, and Jarvis Woody to the plate. First pitch swing in his maze, and he pops it foul back over the screen, back around where the visitors sit. 
Mays walked. Got two stolen bases and scored on a wild pitch in the first. Here's the 0-1 from Carter. Again, he spoils it, knocks it out of play. Right side, no balls, two strikes. Gets it over toward the softball field. Just checked a couple of minutes ago we didn't have an update. Softball, but we'll check again in a minute. Called strike at the knees, and he struck him out looking. Holmes Community College strikeout, second one of the afternoon for Will Carter, and that's a good way to start off the third. Here's James Woody, who has a walk and a stolen base to his credit so far today. No softball update yet. Ball one comes in to James Woody. Carter looks in to Ramage for the sign. Now the pitch. The breaking ball got it in at the knees for strike one. Good looking pitch. Second time this afternoon he's gotten that exact pitch and gotten that called strike. 1-1. One, one. Fastball that's up. Three balls and a strike. Whippet softball 13 and 5 on the season. 5 and 1 in region play. They've won their last five ball games. Pitch fastball down and away. Ball 3. 3 and 1. Doubleheader with Senatobia going on now for the ladies, and then they're going to travel to Meridian on Tuesday, just as the baseball team will. They've got a 6.30 appointment with the Trojans. 3-1 pitch, and he walked him. Second time this afternoon that James Woody's reached via now a walk. 10, Jarvis, Woody. So one-out base runner now for the Titans. Whippets lead 5-3. We're in the top of the third inning. Third inning presented by Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts. James Woody at first. Jarvis Woody, the hitter. Carter throws an inside fastball that gets the corner for a called strike one. Right on right matchup, runner at first. Throw will be at, over in that direction. James Woody back in ahead of the tag by Patton. Outfield playing straight away. Wind has died down some. Flag in center field not moving much at all, just stirring a little bit as another throw comes over to first, and Woody in on all fours. The counts 0-1 to Jarvis Woody. He's the pitcher today. Carter to the plate. Chopped over the first base side of the pitcher's mound. Up with it is Carter, and he makes the throw to record out number two. Now batting for the Titans, number 34, Jalen Woody. James Woody gets up to second. So that's the second out of this top of the third inning. The batter's Jalen Borden. Borden doubled and drove in a run in the first. Now Caleb Johnson will come in and courtesy run for Woody. Now that there are two outs and Woody's in scoring position. So now that's Johnson at second. A nice looking pitch taken for a strike. Kind of backdoored that one for called strike one. That's the best pitch looking pitch Carter's thrown today. Oh, one hit hard to third under the glove of Riles into left field. Johnson's going to be waved around. Throw coming in, going to be cut off, thrown to the plate, but not in time as Johnson comes in standing up. RBI single with two outs by Jalen Borden makes it 5 4. Ridgeland gets to within a run. Now, batting number 13, Dakari Wallace. That ball was smashed 
there on the ground. And Riles had to go over to his left to get it. But it went under his glove. Pitch is down and away to Dakari Wallace. Seventh grader Dakari Wallace at the plate. Runners taken off. Ramage with a throw. It could be there. They got him. Great throw, Ramage. Over to nine to get the tag and the out. And in the end, ain't on a caught stealing. One run on one hit. No errors. Nobody left on base. Ridgeland has stranded two through three innings. They pick up a run here, and the score now, Whippets five and Ridgeland four. Back after this as Whippet baseball continues. When the seasons change, so does Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts with all new spring shoes, clothing, and accessories. New at Sullivan's is spring transitional clothing for men and women and the best selection of ladies' footwear. Revamp your home for spring with colorful home decor and spring candles. Getting married? If so, be sure to register at Sullivan's where they have most everything for kitchen and home. Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts, Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Did you know gum disease is one of the leading causes of tooth loss in adults? Hello, this is Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. Studies have linked untreated gum disease to some more serious health problems such as heart disease. Autumn Ridge Dental understands the importance of keeping not only our patients' teeth healthy, but their gums as well. If you are overdue for a dental checkup, call Autumn Ridge Dental for an appointment with one of our registered dental hygienists, and we will give you something to smile about. Boswell Media Sports. Now, batting for the Whippets, number 14. Riley, Riley Patton, Patton, Ty Ramage, and Will Carter do up for Kosciuszko in the home half of the third. Whippets lead Ridgeland 5 to 4. Jarvis Woody's first pitch to Riley Patton is a called strike. Patton's driven in a run today. He looks at ball two that's off the plate. Right on left matchup. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Popped up on the infield. Second baseman coming in. Now first baseman calls it off, and it goes off his glove, and Patton will be safe at first. First baseman was coming in fast. Got the tip of his glove on it. Now batting number but, 30. Uh, that's a frustrating error there for Ridgeland. Fourth of the afternoon. The infield pop up. It's on the grass over toward the second baseman. Lead off man on base for Kosciuszko. Here's Ty Ramage. Pitch up and away. One ball, no strikes. Ridgeland has hurt themselves with some fielding mistakes. Pitch chopped, bounced back from the third base side of the backstop for strike one. Ramage doubled down the line his last time up. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Way off the plate. Two balls and a strike. Will Carter's due to hit next. Win. Picking up a little bit, still blowing out to right, but not heavy. Called strike, outer half. Count even now, two and two. Patton gets his lead at first, not a big lead. From the stretch, here's Woody's pitch. Popped him up, right side of the infield. That's been money for the whippet so far. This time, the first baseman, Borden, gets it. And there's one out in the inning. 
Amage pops up to the first baseman for one out in the third. Third inning of Whippet Baseball presented by Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts. Now, Highway 12. 17, Will, Carter. Will Carter hits now. Padden at first and one out. Whippet scored three runs in the bottom of the first to answer a three spot from Ridgeland in the top of the first. And the Whippet's got a pair in the bottom of the second. That one's popped up into shallow left field. That could be trouble. Left fielder overplayed it. It sailed about five feet behind him and drops in. One of those high hit balls in the clear blue sky is what they call a high sky. And that one drops in. Carter gets on base. Eli Kemp's going to run this time for Ramage. Or, excuse me, he's going to run for Eli Kemp. I think uh, may put Black in there. No, uh, excuse me. No, that's uh, Eli Kemp coming out to run for Will Carter. Time's been called by Coach Chris Peden. We'll take the timeout with him. We'll come back in 30 seconds with uh, the Wibbits down 5-4. Back after this on Breezy 101. A better tomorrow. Did you know gum disease is one of the leading causes of tooth loss in adults? Hello, this is Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. Studies have linked untreated gum disease to some more serious health problems such as heart disease. Autumn Ridge Dental understands the importance of keeping not only our patients' teeth healthy, but their gums as well. If you are overdue for a dental checkup, call Autumn Ridge Dental for an appointment with one of our registered dental hygienists, and we will give you something to smile about. Boswell Media Sports. Back to action. Runner at second. And Landon Wallace, the hitter. Pitch from Woody way off the plate. One of the right-handed batter's box. Runner at first, excuse me, runners at first and second. Eli Kemp down there running for Carter. Riley Patton at second base. Whippets have two on and one out. Five errors committed so far by Ridgeland. He shows bunt, takes a pitch, but it's called strike. One and one. Wallace singled his first time up and scored in the second. Time called. Wallace checks the card on his left wristband, and now he's in there, crowds the plate a little bit. Right on left matchup, check of the runner. Woody brings it to the plate. Hit back up the middle. Second uh, shortstop scoops, get the out for one, and the double play ends the inning. Nice play there by Mays for Ridgeland to get the double play and end the threat in the inning. No runs, no hits, two errors, and a runner left on base. Whippets have stranded four. They lead it five to four. Fourth inning coming up. It'll be the bottom of the order. Dakari Wallace, Sakari McDonald, and Kyle Carter do up for Richland as Whippet Baseball continues. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson, Bradley Tyler, or Michael Hatcher at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Premier Medical Group and Trace Urgent Care remind you that if you have any COVID-19 symptoms, please call first. There are multiple options to see you. Also, talk to your provider about your wellness or Healthy You appointment. This appointment is covered by most insurances, and it will help you maintain your health and prevent illnesses like cardiovascular disease and certain cancers. Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko and Carthage and Trace Urgent Care. Call for an appointment today. 
Boswell Media Sports. As we start the bottom of the fourth, excuse me, top of the fourth, you finally got an update on Whippet Fast Pitch Softball. They're in the middle of the fifth inning next door, and Senatobia leads Kosciuszko 5-1. to one. Senatobia, Senatobia Warriors lead Lady Whippets 5-1. to one. In the middle of the fifth inning, Will Carter out here to face the bottom three in the order. Pitch just missed upstairs, ball one to Dakari Wallace, who was at bat when Jalen Borden was thrown out trying to steal second. Now it's 2-0 and oh as the pitch was way outside. Here at the baseball field, it's 5-4. Kosciuszko has a one-run lead on 5A Ridgeland. 2-0 pitch, hit up in the air. Foul territory, right side is going to get down just in front of the fence in foul territory. Patton couldn't get to it. That's strike one. Takari Wallace grounded out to second to end the first inning. Carter's 2-1. Goes the other way on the ground. Landon Wallace gets it and throws out to Kari Wallace in plenty of time for out number one in the fourth. Now batting number six. Fourth inning of Whippet Baseball is brought to you by Central Tire Service. The hitter is Zakari McDonald. All right-handed hitting lineup for Ridgeland against the right-hander. Pitch had some bend on it from Carter, but it's upstairs, ball one. Here's the 1-0. It's a called strike on the outside corner. Carter has not gotten ahead of the hitters with that first pitch. He's been throwing ball one pretty consistently. Steps off the rubber for a moment. And now he's ready. Works from the stretch all the time. Kick and delivery. Chop toward third on the grass. Carter gets it himself, throws over, but it gets past Patton, and it'll carry him into, into foul territory toward the right field line. Now the throw in the infield gets away. None will have to uh, get over and get in on the grass and shallow left, but the runner will stay at second. That was going to be a tough play for Carter. Might have should have let his third baseman get that one. That was going to be a tough play either way for Riles. That ball no, was st stayed on the infield grass. Carter. I think it was going to be a case where a speedy runner like McDonald was going to beat it out anyway. I'm going to award McDonald with a base hit there. But then he gets second on the error on the throw by the pitcher. So that, I'm going to score that a single and an error. Runner at second no, with one out. 1-0 one oh the count to Kyle Carter. Kyle grounded out to short. Bunts right back toward the pitcher. Plenty of time for Carter to make the play, and he retires Kyle Carter at first. The runner moves from second to third on the bunt. Now, That's five, the tying run down, down at third base in the top of the fourth. Second out of the inning. Markel Thompson will hit now. He's the leadoff hitter in the Titan order. There's a strike on a pitch that looked a little up and away. We'll all take it without complaint. 0 and 1. Pitch on its way. And he pulled the string on that one, got Thompson to swing way ahead of it for strike two. Advantage, Will Carter. Runner at third with two out in the top of the fourth. Here comes the pitch. Fouled back over our heads, over the press box. The 
Count stays 0-2. Carter's 0-2. Popped up in field right side. Patton barely has to move. And he looks up into that high sky and makes the catch. That's how you do it. No runs, one hit, no error. One error, excuse me, one error on the inning. And a man left on base. Middle of the fourth. The score remains Kosciuszko 5 and Ridgeland 4. Back after this with more Whippet Baseball on Breezy 101. You've changed thousands of diapers, played peekaboo and duck duck goose for hours. Yep. Because you do anything for your kids. That's why it's so important to protect them with life insurance from State Farm. State yep. Farm agent Angel Alvin McDonald will help make it easy and affordable to help protect your family no matter what the future holds. That's because right. for the people you do anything for, life insurance can mean everything. Call State Farm agent Angel Alvin McDonald in Kosciuszko, Mississippi today. Like good a day. good neighbor, State Farm is there. 662-289-3161. Y'all have a good now. Are you tired of being turned down by the other guy? Turn down for what? Come to Lindsay's Auto Sales because we will not turn you down for credit here. Turn down for what? Lindsay's Auto Sales, low down payments and low monthly notes. Kosciuszko and Ackerman. Boswell Media Sports. A sunny Saturday afternoon watching a baseball game. Doesn't get much better than this. Glad you joined us. Maybe you're watching on the Pickles Drugstore video stream. The link to that is available at breezynews.com. Maybe you're in the car listening to us on Breezy 101. Maybe you're somewhere else listening on the app. Thanks for making us a part of your Saturday afternoon. Bottom of the fourth coming up. and Here's Landon Powell swinging at the first pitch. Chops it. Foul territory right left side for strike one. Five runs on six hits for Kosciuszko. Four runs on four hits for Ridgeland. No balls and a strike to Kalen Powell, who's already two for two. He has a double and a single, and he scored twice. And pitch is fouled up and out of play. It was breaking ball. He got out ahead of it. Sent it off the end of the bat out of play toward the visitors bleachers. So Woody ahead on Powell 0-2. That one chopped straight down on the plate. James Woody up with it. Hoping to tag Powell out before he could get out of the batter's box. But that was a foul ball. Working from the windup. It's Jarvis Woody, the right-hander. Kicks and delivers. Just caught a piece of it, did Powell. Count stays 0-2. Powell, then Fancher, then Wood for the Whippets. You were 8-4 and four on the season, 5-0 and oh in region play. Bottom of the fourth inning. Count goes to 1-2. and two. About to have the sixth, sixth pitch of the at-bat. Ball outside. Powell looked like he might want to swing at that one, but good job letting it go. Two and two. Now Here comes the 2 2 pitch. Popped up shallow left. That could be trouble the way things have gone today. Shortstop there, though, had a bead on it. Gets it about uh, four or five feet back on the, on the grass. Powell retired out number one, popping up to the shortstop. Central Tire Service presents the fourth inning of Whippet Baseball. Batters Larson Fancher, he smacks one back into center field. It'll get down for a base hit. Line single on the first pitch that Larson Fancher saw. 
But he's at first now. Ethan Wood at the plate now. At the bottom of the fourth inning. It was tied 3-3 after one inning, and the Whippets took the lead in the home half of the second, putting up two runs. Ridgeland added one in their half of the third. Now we're in the bottom of the fourth. 5-4 our score. Getting out ahead of that one, fouling it up and out of play is Wood for strike one. Jarvis Woody has two strikeouts on the afternoon. And the young man in the batter's box is the player he struck out both times. Wood gets time granted for a moment, but he's back in quickly. Fancher gets his lead at first. Here's the pitch. Chops it foul left side, 0-2. Wood pitched Tuesday at Louisville, struck out 13 and walked five, got a five-inning complete game win. As the Whippets took down Louisville 12-2 to complete the two-game sweep. Kosciuszko and Louisville played here Tuesday afternoon, and the Whippets won that one 20-3 and a laugh. For There's a ball ripped to left field. Going to hit right in front of the wall. Left fielder up with it quickly and going to hold – Wood to a single, but boy, that was good contact on that pitch. Now, batting number one. Wood gets his first base hit of the afternoon. First and second now with one out for Kosciuszko in the fourth. Nolan Yule gets in now. Right on right matchup with Jarvis Woody. Here's the pitch, called strike. Ball was right above the knees. Woody checks Fancher at second. Now the 0-1, swing and a miss, strike two. Nolan Ewell down 0 and 2. One out in the inning. Bridgeland got a double play to get them out of a two on, one out situation in the third. Let's see what happens here in the fourth. 0 and 2. And fouling it back into the net is Ewell. Big series coming up next week at Northeast Lauderdale, Tuesday, 7 o'clock, first pitch. Audio broadcast for you for that one on Breezy 101. 0 oh and 2, and he hits it up the middle for a base hit. And that'll move everybody up a base. Now the bases are loaded. Two strike hitting. Nolan Ewell gets the single. Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back singles with one out. Means base is loaded now for Parker Riles. Parker has driven in a run today with a single. It's one for two. He's a whip it at every base now. First baseman playing in on the edge of the grass. Infielders in a little in about halfway here. He, Reaches out, fouls that one, skies it out of play right side. Woody's been getting a lot of strike one situations here. First pitch, strike ones. The kick and delivery in on the hands, dribbled toward third, and it goes off the glove of the third baseman, and everyone's going to be safe. Fancher comes across to score. And yet another, another error. Third baseman win. I think uh, looked up, but thought about where he was going to throw the ball before he got in the glove. It went off the heel. 
So Fancher scores to make it six to four. There's a called strike to start off the at bat for Reed Pat, excuse me, Riley Patton. Riles down at first, Ewell at second, Wood at third. Still just one out. Swing and a miss. Slow getting around on that one was Patton for strike two. Advantage Woody. No balls, two strikes. Bases loaded. Don't think Patton will see anything to hit here. Here it comes. Reaches out, sends it back and out of play. Ty Ramage in the on-deck circle for Kosciuszko. The bottom of the fourth inning, Whippet six and the Ridgeland Titans four. One out, bottom of the fourth inning, bases are loaded. New baseballs coming into the game. Right on left matchup. Woody looking for a strike here. Go two. Up and away. One and two. Woody looks in to his brother for the sign to the belt. Now the pitch, one and two. Popped up, foul, back, get over the net. Wind has shifted a little bit, blowing a little more towards left now. It had been blowing out toward right, right center. It's blowing out uh, the, blowing the other way. One and two. Hit on the ground right toward shortstop. Going to be at the out. Out at second for the double play. And for the second straight inning, a 6-3 double play will end a great opportunity for the Whippets. Bases, would have, bases were loaded with one out. And a grounder to short ends it for the Whippets. No run, uh, one run on three hits, one error. Two left on base. The Whippets have stranded six through four. And they lead Ridgeland after four complete by a score of six to four. Whippet baseball continues after this on Basel Media Sports. From the classroom to the athletic playing field, Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first-class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Boswell Media Sports. We start at the top of the fifth inning. Four runs on four hits for Ridgeland. Six run on nine hits for the Whippets. Big difference is uh, in errors. Errorless ball for the Whippets, and I have six errors for Ridgeland. A couple of those might be scored base hits by a more charitable scorer than I am, but uh, right now that's how I've got it scored, and it's Kosciuszko six and Ridgeland four. Will Carter out to work again in the fifth. He'll face hitters two, three, and four. Mark Montrevious win, Richard Mays, James Woody. As Kosciuszko holds a two-run lead going to the fifth. Number two, Montrevious win.
No update on the score from softball there in game one of a doubleheader against Senatobia. Fastball in for a strike on Montravius Wynn to start the inning. Carter working quickly, the 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball that's fouled up out of play on the right side behind the dugout. No balls and two strikes, advantage Carter. The last score we update we had was about 25 minutes ago from softball, and it was Senatobia 5 and the Lady Whippets 1. But they've played a good bit since then. 0-2, and, and he struck him out. Got him to swing one that was off the plate. Got him to swing it at a ball. Holmes Community College strikeout for Will Carter. He's got three on the afternoon, and there's one out in the top of the fifth inning. Fifth inning presented by Chris Coleman, Alpha Insurance. And the hitter is Richard Mays. He's walked and struck out looking. Carter's pitch. Taken low. Six to four. Pitch taken off the plate outside. Two and oh. Mays plays at shortstop for Ridgeland in the last two innings. He's made a 6-3 double play to end an opportunity for the Whippets. There he chops one. That'll find its way through on the left side for a base hit. Put that one perfectly between Nunn and Riles on the left side of the infield for a single. Fifth base hit of the afternoon for the Titans. They trail Kosciuszko 6-4 in the fifth. The hitter is James Woody. Woody has walked both times. This time he's up swinging the first pitch, chops it foul. Coach Boland was trying to get some all-star votes there. The field in the ball in front of the whip at dugout, but uh, didn't quite make the play. I think he should give us five push-ups for that one. I'll try to remember to tell him that when we meet next week for the Surf Pro Coaches Show, which you can hear every Thursday. And now they've got the runner caught between first and second, but the throw from Patton up to the bag is offline. They had Mays dead to rights. They had him he was just taken off, and Carter threw to first. Patton had him there throwing to Nunn at second, but he threw it where Nunn couldn't get to it. So Mays up on the error. First error of the afternoon for the Whippets. Puts a runner at second. 0-1 the count to James Woody. And that one's right through the window on the left side. They'll hold Mays at third, and runners at the corners now for Ridgeland. They've got a threat going. First and third with one out. Now, number 10, Jarvis Woody. Here's Jarvis Woody, who's 0 for 2. Carter looking at some the card he keeps in his back pocket. Some, some signs there. Time run at first. The top of the fifth inning. Carter will throw in that direction. Wood, Woody, excuse me, is back in plenty of time. Mays, the base runner at third. The inning started with a strikeout of Montravius win. And Mays single to left. And Woody single to the same spot and left. Runner at first taken off. They'll throw down to first. And Patton will hold it and make sure that Mays doesn't go anywhere at third. Stolen base for James Woody. 
his second of the afternoon. We were tied 3-3 after one, and the Whippets got a 5-3 lead after putting up two in the bottom of the second. Teams have each scored once since then. Pitch from Carter upstairs to Jarvis Woody. One ball, one strike. Runners second and third. Ridgeland with a threat in the fifth. Ball lined up above first base dugout, just caught the end of the net. Comes bouncing back into the infield. Ball and two strikes. First base open. But runners at second and at third. Carter kicks and delivers. That one lifted up high and out of play toward the outfield of the softball complex. Sixth pitch of the at-bat coming up here. To Jarvis Woody. Carter the junior fires it in there and that's going to be over the head of nine into shallow center field for a base hit as Mays will score. Throw comes in on the infield, cut off the mound by Patton. And now it's whip at six and Titans five. So Woody with a nice bit of two strike hitting. Sends one soft liner into center field. Third base hit of the inning for Ridgeland. And the hitter's Jalen Borden, who is two for two. He's had a double and a single, and he asked for time. Still just one out in the inning. Pitch coming in. He showed bunt and it hit him in the back. Turned his back to it and it hit him. First hit batsman of the ball game. That loads the bases. So Woody now, James Woody at third, Jarvis Woody at second, and Coach Bolin wants time with one out in the top of the fifth inning, one run across. I think he's going to be up to make a pitching change. Going to be Will Carter taking an exit to some applause. And a lot of folks scooting around. I think I know what we got going here as far as a pitching change. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll tell you about the new pitcher in the ball game. Looks like it's going to be Riley Patton. And we'll tell you about the other defensive changes and continue with this ball game. The Whippets ahead 6-5 in the top of the fifth. Don't go anywhere. More Whippet baseball after this on Boswell Media Sports. Tax season often brings about stress and anxiety. When you want to make sure your personal and business finances are well taken care of, trust the experts at Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. Kenny Dungan and staff can ease your mind when it comes to financial questions. If you have questions or concerns about changing tax laws, Watkins, Ward, and Stafford will make sure you understand these laws and how they directly impact you or your business. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford leading their clients through the next generation of change. South Natchez Street in Kosciuszko. It starts as a trickle, then the sill on the pipe gives way, and you've got a mess on your hands. Keep the damage out by calling SurfPro of Northeast Delta Lands, 289-7473. That's where you'll find a team of cleanup specialists with proven experience, equipment, and training needed to make sure your property is repaired right the first time. Because when water damage strikes your home or business, you don't want to risk more damage by attempting to do the cleanup yourself. Working to help make fire and water damage like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Boswell Media Sports. A Wendy's call to the bullpen for Coach Derek Boland and the Whippets. They'll just look over to first base and call on Riley Patton. Riley's going to come over and uh, got exchanged gloves. And now he's going to be ready to 
take over on the mound. Batting a junior right-hander. Give you his stats on the year. So far, this is just his second appearance. He's pitched two innings, given up five hits, one earned run. ERA 3.5. He inherits bases loaded and one out in a 6-5 ball game. In other words, Riley Patton's inherited a mess. Ethan Woods moved over to first, and Hayden Rogers is in in right field. First pitch in to Dakari Wallace, hits him in the back, and that'll force in a run. One pitch, and we got a tie ball game. That run gets charged to now, Carter. Number six, Dakari McDonald. That's not how you want to start things off. Now the hitter is Zakari McDonald, who's one for two. Base is loaded. He skies one the opposite way to right field. Hayden Rogers gets it. Runner tags. Throw comes in, but there won't be a play at the plate. So Jarvis Woody scores. Make it seven to six in favor of the visitors from Ridgeland. Runner at second stays put. Runner at first, of course, stays put as well, but an RBI for Zakari McDonald. Sack fly. Bunted back up toward the pitcher. Patton on top of it. Throws to Wood at first, and they get Carter for out number three. But three runs come across for Ridgeland in the top of the inning. Three runs on three hits. One error, two left on base. Five stranded through five innings for Ridgeland, but they have put three across in the top of the fifth, and they have retaken the lead. Ridgeland seven, Kosciuszko six. It'll be the bottom three in the order coming up for the Whippets in the home half of the fifth. Ramage, Will Carter, and Landon Wallace. Stay tuned. We'll be back with it after this on Boswell Media Sports. When the seasons change, so does Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts with all new spring shoes, clothing, and accessories. New at Sullivan's is spring transitional clothing for men and women and the best selection of ladies' footwear. Revamp your home for spring with colorful home decor and spring candles. Getting married? If so, be sure to register at Sullivan's where they have most everything for kitchen and home. Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts, Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Did you know gum disease is one of the leading causes of tooth loss in adults? Hello, this is Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. Studies have linked untreated gum disease to some more serious health problems such as heart disease. Autumn Ridge Dental understands the importance of keeping not only our patients' teeth healthy, but their gums as well. If you are overdue for a dental checkup, call Autumn Ridge Dental for an appointment with one of our registered dental hygienists, and we will give you something to smile about. Boswell Media Sports. Jarvis Woody has his afternoon on the mound done. He's moved over to third base. And Ridgeland is bringing the third baseman in to pitch. That's Montrevious Wynn. Montrevious Wynn making his eighth appearance of the season. Record of one and two. ERA of 3.59. He's pitched 27 and a third innings. Has given up 19 hits. Struck out 43 in 27 innings, but he's also walked 20. So he's thrown a lot of pitches. Opponents are hitting 229 off Montrevious win right-hander. You'll see hitters seven, eight, and nine in the whip at batting order as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Fifth inning presented by Chris Coleman, Alpha Insurance. And a three-run top of the fifth has given Ridgeland the lead again. They lead the Whippets seven to six. Now we're for the Whippets, number 30, Ty Ramage. Here's Ty Ramage. Ty has doubled and popped out. Right-hander working from the windup. Fastball that's up about eye level. Ball one to Ramage. One-zero pitch. 
Brought that one down a little bit, but not enough for a called strike. It's 2-0. and Haven't had it's 3-0 and now. Have not had an update on softball in about 40, 45 minutes. What is it? Okay. 8-1, I just got that now. 8-1, the score, Senatobia leading Kosciuszko in the game one of a doubleheader. 3-0 pitch, and he walked him on four pitches. see Ramage down to first. Will we see Cooper Black? I think we will. We will. There's Cooper Black. Hayden Rogers will bat for the first time today. Right-handed hitter. Tie and run at first in the bottom of the sixth inning. I mean, fifth inning, excuse me. Bottom of the fifth. Pitch up and in. Fifth straight ball from the team leader in innings pitched for Ridgeland. Pitch taken at the knees for strike one. Rogers making just his 10th appearance at the plate in this season. Game 13 of the year for the Whippets. They've won 8 of 12. They've won all five region four ball games. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hit him on the top of the helmet. And trip to first for Hayden Rogers. Walk and hit by pitch to start the fifth. Rough start for Montrevious win. Whippets like it. That puts the go-ahead run on base. Brings up number nine hitter, Landon Wallace. And he's singled and scored one for two on the day. Right on left here. Whippet second baseman. Ready to step in now. Win comes set. Fires it in. Strike on the outer half. Called strike one. Pitcher comes set, the 0-1, bun in, third base side, nicely placed near the mound, third base side, and Wallace will be retired 1-3, but the batters move up. Good sack bunt. That's just how you're supposed to do it. Now batting number 11, Taylor Powell. That brings up the top of the order, Kalen Powell. Kalen with two hits and two runs scored today. Runners second and third. Infield creeping in. And that one hits him on the back. Ouch. Right below the 11, lower back. Got him second. Hit by a pitch from Wynn. Coach Peden calls timeout. Ridgeland coach stepping out to the mound now. That is... Not typical of his pitcher. Bases are loaded now. We'll take a closer look at those stats for win. He's only hit four on the season coming into the game between in 27 and third innings, and he's hit two right here without recording, with only recording one out. Now we'll see what Larson Fancher can do for the Whippets. Down a run, one out, and the base is jammed. Big situation here in the bottom of the sixth. Whippet at every base. 
Middle infielders about halfway in. Corner infielders step in on the grass. Ball ripped, right field sailing, and it's gonna get out but foul. Just off the foul pole. Boy, the, that was nearly a grand slam. Fancher got every bit of that ball but just drove it foul to the right side, not by much. Mercy. 0 oh and 1. Bases loaded. One out. Last inning, Ridgeland got a double play for the second consecutive inning to end a whip it threat. Infielders back just a little bit. And he swings the one down in the dirt. Ball gets away from the catchers. And coming down from third, trying to score on the wild pitch is Cooper Black, and he's tagged out by the pitcher win. Ball had skidded in front of the plate. And Black is retired. We're out number two. Two outs now. The other runners move up a base on the wild pitch. Foul to second. Hayden Rogers to third. So Black retired one unassisted. Umpires call time. They're going to talk for just a minute. I think you're confirming the count. Should be 0-2, uh, I think. I think Fancher swung at that ball in the dirt. Should be 0-2. Yeah, and it is 0-2. 0-2. All of a sudden wins a strike away from escaping a really dangerous situation. Infield back at regular depth, and that one comes in and hits him on the leg. Third hit batsman of the inning for a pitcher who had only hit four in 27-plus innings. Now, Baseball's funny 16, like that. In the bottom of the fifth inning, fifth inning presented by Chris Coleman, Alpha Insurance. Bases loaded once again. Now two out, and the hitter is Ethan Wood. Ethan singled his last time up. Really hit the ball hard. Let's see if he can do it again. From the stretch, win. Breaking ball in the dirt, blocked up nicely by Woody. One ball, no strikes. Rodgers at third, Powell at second, Fancher at first. The pitch, a high fastball fouled straight back into the net, strike one. Moment of drama in this ball game. The Whippets have the tying run at third. The bottom of inning number five. Seven inning ball game. Would ask for time. Backs up about a step and a half. Now gets back in. 1-1 one, one pitch from Wynn. Here it comes. Bounces in front of the catcher. He blocks it with a chest protector and bounces back up onto the infield grass. Two and one. Wynn has had some control problems. But he caught a break by making a good defensive play on a wild pitch. Tagged Cooper Black out as he was trying to score on a wild pitch, and that one knocked foul, bounces up the third base side and goes into foul territory. Two and two the count. Once again, Wynn is just a strike away from escaping. He is walking on the high wire right now. He has not thrown many balls in the strike zone this inning. Come set, 2-2 pitch with the bases loaded. 
And two out, and that's going to hit into center field, but it's going to stay up in time for Thompson, the center fielder, to get it again. Wood with great contact on the ball. And the fact is he just hit that one a long way on the line. But the center fielder able to get over to his right and get to it and put it away. And the Whippets leave the bases loaded in the fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors. Three left on base. And that hurts. The Whippets have stranded nine through five innings and trails seven to six after five complete. Back with more Whippet baseball after this on Boswell Media Sports. Vehicle maintenance is often a hassle and occurs at the most inconvenient times. Central Tire Service enjoys vehicle maintenance and focuses on getting you back on the road from brakes, alignments, and exhaust to oil changes or new and used tires for your vehicle or ATV. Central Tire Service stocks all the major brands, Kenda, Toyo, Firestone, and Goodyear. They specialize in accessories for your truck or ATV and install rough country lift kits. Central Tire Service, across from Louvelle on Highway 35 in Kosciuszko. Hey, I'm James Matters with Farm Bureau Insurance. For the past six years, I've been blessed to serve our community as a local insurance agent. When most people think of insurance, they think of their home and auto, which is the natural thing to do. This year, I'm shifting my focus to what's important, family. Protecting your family with life insurance is the most important insurance decision you will ever make. I'd like the opportunity to sit down with you and your family to discuss your life insurance. Together, we can build a plan that fits your needs and your budget. After all, life insurance is more than a policy. It's a promise, a promise to take care of the ones you love no matter what. Give me a call, 289-4862. Boswell Media Sports. We're back at the fairgrounds. Riley Patton out to work here in the sixth inning. He came in in relief of Will Carter in the fifth. Whippets. Couldn't cash in on bases loaded opportunity with one out in the home half of the fifth. Now batting number five, it's Markel Thompson. Seven six in favor of Ridgeland. Top of the order up for the Titans. Markel Thompson shows bunt up the third base side. Up quickly on it is Riles, and he makes the throw to Wood to retire out in the sixth. Now batting number two, seven runs Premier. on seven hits for the Titans. Six runs on nine hits for the Whippets. I have Ridgeland with six errors. The Whippets with one. Seven six the score. Pitch comes in nearly hits Montrevious win. Takes it. Ball one. Watkins Ward and Stafford presents the sixth inning of Whippet baseball. Got a good one here under the sunshine. Swing and a miss. Couldn't get around in time on that one. One ball, one strike. That one, breaking ball didn't break. In fact, just hit him in the upper arm, maybe the Left shoulder blade hit by pitch will send Win to first base. Second batter hit by Riley Patton. He came in and got the last two outs of the fifth inning in relief of Will Carter. Pitch on its way, hit hard right at Riles, but then he comes up with it, bobbles it, and he won't be able to make the throw. Hard hit ball that was right at him on one hop, and he got it in the glove, and then when he came up, ball popped up as he tried to make the transfer to the hand. Now batting number eight, James Woody. Error on the third baseman gives it, gives the whip its first and second, excuse me, the Titans first and second now with one out, the batter's James Woody. Woody's been on base every time, walked twice and singled. Pitch from Patton outside for ball one. In the top of the sixth inning. This has been a good one. It was tied 3-3 after one. It's five, four whippets after three. Pitches downstairs, ball two. A three run top of the 
fifth inning has given the visitors the one run lead. And they have runners first at second with one out. Batting the right hander to the belt, now to the plate. Hit right at the shortstop, none. Flips to Wallace at second for one, and the throw over in time, scooped on one hop by Ethan Wood. Good job there. Six, four, three, double play. Ends the inning for the Whippets. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Good defensive play. Let's see if that puts a little momentum, a little wind in the Whippets' sails as they bat in the bottom of the sixth. It'll be Ewell, Riles, and Patton due up as the Whippets trail Ridgeland going to the bottom of the sixth. Seven to six. Back after this with more Whippet baseball. You've changed thousands of diapers, played peekaboo and duck duck goose for hours. Yep. Because you do anything for your kids. That's why it's so important to protect them with life insurance from State Farm. State yep. Farm agent Angel Alvin McDonald will help make it easy and affordable to help protect your family no matter what the future holds. That's because right. for the people you do anything for, life insurance can mean everything. Call State Farm agent Angel Alvin McDonald in Kosciuszko, Mississippi today. Like good a good day. neighbor, State Farm is there. 662-289-3161. Y'all have a good one now. Are you tired of being turned down by the other guy? Turn down for what? Come to Lindsay's Auto Sales because we will not turn you down for credit here. Turn down for what? Lindsay's Auto Sales, low down payments and low monthly notes. Turn down for what? Kosciuszko and Ackerman. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of inning number six. Middle three in the order. Nolan Ewell, Parker Riles do up to face Montrevious win. Kosciuszko trails Ridgeland seven to six. Whippets have just six outs left to play with. Take a look, bottom half of this inning at uh, some of the former Whippets who are playing at collegiate level now. Community college. Ranks Will Cook, Heath McBride, Evan Scott, all playing at Holmes Community College just down the road. Will Cook starting to be a more counted on option on the mound in relief. He's pitched 10 innings and five appearances for Holmes, 4.50 ERA, struck out seven and walked four in a middle relief roll. Similar role for Heath McBride, though he has picked up a save in six appearances. Four innings pitch, 6.75 ERA. For the lefty, Heath McBride. And then catcher Evan Scott at platoons at catcher for the Bulldogs. He's batting 227 in 10 games. His batting average has really shot up in the last two to three weeks. Has a couple of doubles, four runs driven in. Back on the 18th of March, he went one for three with a double, drove in two against Mississippi Delta. I'll tell you about some of the other whippets as we get opportunities. Nolan Ewell comes to the plate now to face Montrevious win. The whippets down by one in the bottom of the sixth. Outfield shading Ewell to the left. But he goes the other way. Line drive. Will it get down? No, it's going to be foul. Foul by about four feet down toward the corner. Whippets have hit some balls hard in these middle innings. Fancher was just a few feet away from a grand slam home run in the right field corner last inning. 0-1, fouled straight back. Advantage win, 0-2. Oh no balls, two strikes. Right on right matchup, win, kicks, delivers. Breaking ball hit over the head of the shortstop. That'll be a single. Two strike. Base hit for Nolan Ewell. We like that. Whippets get the leadoff man on in the sixth. That's the tying run. Now batting number 25, Parker Riles. See if Parker Riles can move that tying run around. Parker singled in the first, grounded out in the second, throw over to first. Back in on his, on his belly is Ewell. 
Rouse reached on an error in the fourth. Again, another throw. That one close. You will end safely. Working from the stretch now is win. Pitch to the plate. High strike, call strike one. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford presents the sixth inning of Saturday afternoon whip at baseball. Quick throw over to first, no tag as Borden had to just make sure he got it in the glove. Throw was a little bit off. 0-1. Time call. Michael Parker was around here earlier. Colin. Sophomore has the most appearances on the Wolves baseball team. There's a ball hit to center field in the air. Plenty of time for Thompson to get over to his right and make the catch for the first out in the inning. Parker, fly, Parker Riles flies out to center field for out number one. Now batting for the whippets, number 14, Riley Pack. Michael Parker has a win under his belt. His ERA is bigger than he wants it to be. 11.42, struck out eight and walked six. Riley Patton will hit now. Get to a right on left matchup. Nolan Ewell, the runner at first. One out in the Whippets half of the six. They're trying to get a run across and tie this game at seven apiece. Or maybe even more. Throw to first. Ewell in on his hands and knees. Wind comes set. Checks the runner. Now fires it in. Fastball up. One ball, no strikes to Patton. Patton officially 0 for 3. He's reached base twice today. Pitch. Called strike. Inner half. One and one. Another throw to first. Ewell had a nice lead. Had to get back quickly. One and one. Be interesting to see whether they want to try to put Ewell on the steal here. He's taken off the pitch. It's outside, but the ball hit bounces twice and backed up by the shortstop. No play there for the Titans. Stole, uh, Lindsay's auto sale stolen base for Nolan Ewell in the bottom of the sixth. Puts the tying run in scoring position now. The count should be two and one. Get that confirmation from home plate umpire Lee Burrell. Two balls and a strike, the count. Win looks twice at Ewell at second. Leaves it up and away for ball three. Win will move some dirt around around the rubber and get over on the third base side of the rubber. Bring it set from the stretch. They're going to throw back. Ball went off. Ewell's back. He was back in on the bag. Center fielder had to go get the ball. Count remains three and one. Chase Morgan's made four appearances for the Trojans of Mississippi Delta Community College. We'll tell you about him in just a minute. Three and one the count. Here's the pitch. And he walked him, left it up. Riley Patton walks. He's the go-ahead run at first. One out in the inning and the hitters tie Ramage. Talking about Chase Morgan, he's appeared in four relief situations for Delta. Eli Kemp 
comes in to run to run for Patton. Coach Bolin wanted to get a little more speed over there. First and second. Courtesy run for Patton, who's now the pitcher. Ball in on the hands. Hit in the air, foul territory. Left side, and the third baseman just smacked into the wall on the student deck. He's still on the seat of his pants. Gets his shortstop to come over. Mays picks up Jarvis Woody. And, boy, he, he was tracking that ball. Didn't know where the wooden fence was. Ouch. But he appears to be okay. Bola checked on him. He's up, says he's okay. Time is called. Ramage is going to talk to Coach Boland, and they give Jarvis Woody a minute to gather himself. He might have left a few parts of himself over there by the student deck in foul territory. I think he's got all the parts back where they belong. Okay. 0-1 oh to count to Ramage. Runners first and second with one out. Breaking ball stays up. Ball one. Chase Morgan's picked up a save, six and a third inning, struck out six, ERA about five and a half. One one, the count to Ramage. Wind checks the runner, time's called. He looked back about three times at Ewell. I mean, at, uh, yeah, at Ewell at first. Ewell's at first, excuse me, at second. Kemp at first. Pitch left down. Two and one. Outfield playing straight away on Ramage. Right on right matchup. Win fires it in. Takes it for a strike. Fastball evens the count. Two and two. Two men on. One away. Bottom of the sixth in a 7-6 ball game. Tie and run at second. Pitch bounces in, is going to get away from the catcher, come off the screen, and everybody will move up. Wild pitch. Runners in scoring position now, both of them. The count goes full. Full count now. First base open. Win comes set. Here's the pitch. Popped him up. Infield. Shortstop calling off. Woody has to backpedal about three steps. Makes it just on the back of the infield dirt for the second out. Ramage pops out to short for the second out. Hayden Rogers come up now. He was hit by a pitch in the fifth. Wibbets have only four outs left to play with. Down seven, six. Runner second and third. Base hit could tie this ball game. Probably would give the Whippets the lead. Let's see what happens. At least a ball hit out of the infield would give the Whippets the lead. Swinging is Rogers. He fouls it straight back. Strike one. Aiden Rogers gets back in, gets the bat up, waves it back and forth, kind of chicken wings that right arm a little bit. From the stretch, pitch taken right down the middle, strike two. Win, just a strike away from preserving the lead. Check the runner at third. Now the pitch to the plate. Pop. That's shallow. Left center field. 
Shortstop under it, puts it away for out number three. Whippets again, leave runners on base, 11 of them. No runs, one hit, no errors. Two left on base, both of them in scoring position. We played six full innings. Kosciuszko trails Ridgeland seven to six. Be back with the top of the seventh inning. Riley Patton back to pitch for the Whippets in the seventh. We'll bring it to you after this on Breezy 101. From the classroom to the athletic playing field, Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first-class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Boswell Media Sports. Welcome back to the fairgrounds. Seventh inning coming your way now. It's Riley Patton will face in the Titan order, Jarvis Woody, Jalen Borden, Dakari Wallace, hitters five, six, and seven. Whippet fast pitch final for you. Senatobia beats Kosciuszko 8-4 in game one. They're about to start game two next door to us here at the Itala County Fairgrounds. The Lady Whippets drop game one to Senatobia. Look to gain the split in game two. Here it's Ridgeland seven, Kosciuszko six. Three run top of the fifth inning. Gave Ridgeland the lead. They had not led since it was three nothing. After the t they put up three in the top of the first. Jarvis Woody leads off. Struck out, grounded out, singled. Now for Takes a strike. Patton has pitched an inning and two thirds. Has not given up a hit, has hit two batters. That one just misses one and one. Just a slight breeze moving things around. We're out toward right center now. We play in the sunshine. Balls lifted up over our heads, foul and out of play for strike two. Patton from the stretch. One, two delivery. Came off speed, came inside, and now the count's even two and two. Outfield straight away. All lined right toward Wallace at second. He does a nice job adjusting on it as it was cutting away from him, and he makes the catch. One out in the inning. Angel Albin McDonald State Farm presents the seventh now, inning of Whippet Baseball. Jaylen. Hope you're watching on the Pickles Drugstore video feed. Jalen Borden looks at a breaking ball for strike one. Borden is two for two. Been on base three times. He's driven in two runs. He reaches out, gets it off the end of the bat, will flare it into right center field for a base hit. Now batting number 13, Dakari Wallace. Borden sticking the bat out there and getting some pretty good contact on it. Gets himself on base with one out. Patton, of course, wants to hold things right here. One 
run lead for the Whippets with one out. He throws to first. We'll go ahead and peek at the Whippet side of the lineup when we go to the bottom of the seventh. It will be the number nine hitter, Landon Wallace, leading off. Then Kalen Powell and Larson Fancher do up. Batten throws a strike. First pitch strike to Dakari Wallace. Dakari Wallace is 0 for 2 with a run driven in today. Throw. Good quick move there by Patton. But Borden was back in time. Righty comes set. 0-1 pitch. Into the hands, fouled off against the screen. Advantage Patton, no balls, two strikes. Junior facing seventh grader, second baseman, Dakari Wallace for Ridgeland. Came in on the hands, and he swung at it, got a little piece of it to stay alive. Still no balls, two strikes. Borden the runner at first. Shuffles out to a lead. Patton will throw over there. Wood catches it, but no tag. Comes set. Throws again to first. That play a little bit closer. Ball dribbled away from Wood just about Eight feet away in the foul territory. Wind is blowing out now toward right. Wind is picked up. You can feel it moving around a little bit out here. Runner taking off, 0-2. Ramage up with it, throws. None will get it. It was a little bit offline, sailed on the first base side of the bag, so Borden gets a stolen base. Now batting number six, Sakari McDonald. That was a strikeout there. Holmes Community College strikeout on Wallace for out number two. Sakari McDonald hits with a runner at, at second and two out. First pitch, chops it to Riles. Riles will throw to first, and that will do it. No runs on one hit. No errors, man left on base. Ridgeland has stranded six through seven. And now we'll go to the bottom of the seventh inning and a chance for the Whippets to tie it with a run or win it with two. Stay with us. We'll be back with the home half of the seventh as the Whippets try to come back from a one-run deficit. Back with more on Boswell Media Sports. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson, Bradley Tyler, or Michael Hatcher at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Premier Medical Group and Trace Urgent Care remind you that if you have any COVID-19 symptoms, please call first. There are multiple options to see you. Also, talk to your provider about your wellness or healthy you appointment. This appointment is covered by most insurances, and it will help you maintain your health and prevent illnesses like cardiovascular disease and certain cancers. Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko and Carthage and Trace Urgent Care. Call for an appointment today. Boswell Media Sports. Here we go. Bottom of the seventh inning, Landon Wallace leads it off, followed by Kalen Powell, then Larson Fancher. The Whippets are a run away from tying it. Richland seven, Kosciuszko six. Three outs for the Whippets to get it done. 
Either send it to extras or send us home. Left-handed hitting Landon Wallace in the batter's box. Last time up, he executed a sack bunt. Martavius win on the mound. Third inning of work for him, and his first pitch is way outside, ball one. Pitch down, ball two. First pitch way up, second pitch way down. Wynn has been wild but uh, at times, but it hasn't cost him anything yet. He hasn't given up a run. 2-0. and oh. That one in the dirt. Ball three. Advantage Wallace. Third baseman playing a step in on the grass on the left side of the infield. Outfield straight away. Wind comes set, fires it in. Ball four as it bounces right in front of the plate. A four pitch walk, and there's the tying run on base to start the seventh inning. Now batting number 11, Kalen Powell. Angel Albin McDonald State Farm presents the seventh inning. Whippets get the man on base that would represents the tie and run. And now you go to Kalen Powell, best hitter for average on the squad. He's doubled, singled, popped to short, and was hit by a pitch. Wallace takes a good lead at first from the stretch. Win fires it to the plate. Here's a ball laced into left field. It's going to roll all the way to the wall at the bottom of the wall. Wallace makes the turn. Going to slide in safely at third, and there's a double. Winning run at second. First pitch hitting Kalen Powell with the double to left. Now the Whippets are officially in business. Pressure is on Richland now. That's Kalen Powell's second double of the day. And he... Ripped that one to left field. Took a couple of short hops and then hit the bottom of the wall. Open stance, left-handed batter's box. K, excuse me, uh, Larson Fancher up now with two singles today. He chops one towards second. Second baseman charges in on it. Will make the put out at first, but that will score Landon Wallace with the tying run, and we're tied at seven. RBI ground out for... Larson Fancher. Now batting for the whippers, number 16, Ethan. Powell Hewitt. is down at third. One away in the inning. The batter is Ethan Wood. Last two times up, Ethan Wood has really hit the ball hard. He got a single that Probably should have been extra bases. It was just uh, well played defensively. And then his last time up, he lined one out to straightaway center. Winning run at third. Hit in the air to right field. Right fielder going back, going back. Makes the catch. Tagging is Powell, and he will score the winning run on a sacrifice fly. Ethan Wood gets the job done. Goes with a fly ball to the opposite field. Sends the right fielder back to make the catch, and Powell tags at third and scores easily, and the Whippets win it in the bottom of the seventh inning with two runs on one hit. So that's your final from the fairgrounds. Kosciuszko, eight. Ridgeland, seven. We'll take our post-game break. When we come back, we'll bring you the premier medical post-game show. We'll name our Autumn Ridge Dental Player of the Game before we're done. Stay with us. We're not done yet. Premier Medical Post Game Report coming up after this. The Whippets win it 8-7. to seven. A better tomorrow starts today with Wendy's Breakfast. A tomorrow that says bacon, not bacant. Where fresh eggs rain like opportunity. Honey butter goodness is spread. And the Frosty is chinoed. At Wendy's, we don't ask what tomorrow holds, but rather, what will you hold tomorrow? 
Will it be the breakfast baconator or the honey butter chicken biscuit? No matter what you choose, tomorrow's looking good. At participating U.S. Wendy's. Hey, I'm Ryder Davis with Farm Bureau. As a young insurance agent, it hasn't taken me long to understand the value of life insurance. Even at an early age, life is unpredictable and it is important that your life is properly insured. With age and good health, there is never a better time to get life insurance than when you're young. Whether you're married or living on your own, someone you love is responsible for you. Life is not guaranteed, but our life insurance is. Call me, text me, or come see me today at Farm Bureau on the Square in Kosciuszko. You can now bank closer to home at Atala County Bank. Hi, this is David Blair with Atala County Bank. I have been serving the people of Atala County with commercial, mortgage, and personal loans for 25 years. Please come see me at Atala County Bank. I look forward to serving you. Atala County Bank, in the North Side Shopping Center next to Sullivan's in Kosciuszko. Call 290-6963. Hometown banking in your hometown. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Still serving the people of Holmes and Carroll Counties, Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank. Premier Medical Group and Trace Urgent Care remind you that if you have any COVID-19 symptoms, please call first. There are multiple options to see you. Also, talk to your provider about your wellness or healthy you appointment. This appointment is covered by most insurances, and it will help you maintain your health and prevent illnesses like cardiovascular disease and certain cancers. Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko and Carthage and Trace Urgent Care. Call for an appointment today. Boswell Media Sports. It's the Premier Medical Post Game Report. The Whippets get a walk-off win this afternoon at the fairgrounds, 8-7 over Ridgeland. They trailed 7-6 going to the home half of the seventh. And that inning started off with a base on balls. Landon Wallace getting a four-pitch walk. And then on the very next pitch, Kalen Powell double to left. Got the Whippets with second and third. And then Larson Fancher grounded out to second and scored Wallace with the tying run at 7-7. And then very next pitch after that, Ethan Wood lifted a deep fly ball to right field. And that was certainly deep enough to score Powell from third on the sacrifice fly. And that was the winning run. The Whippets walk it off with two outs in the seventh to improve to 9-4 in the season. They're 5-0 and in Region 4 play. Of course, this game against a 5A opponent in Ridgeland, not a region game. But region action coming up next week for the Whippets. We'll talk about that in just a minute. A little more about this ball game. We got going early with runs scored. Both teams put up three in the first. And the Whippets got the lead in the bottom of the second by scoring a couple of runs. Landon Wallace led off with a single, then Kalen Powell with a single. The Whippets were able to get both of them across for a 5-3 lead. Then it was the top of the fifth inning when Ridgeland struck for three more. They were down 5-4 at that point. Excuse me, 6-4 at that point. And they took the 7-6 lead in the top of the fifth. They got uh, some things cooking with one out. They got back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back singles then back-to-back -back hit by pitch and then a sack fly. And they were able to work three runners across the plate in that inning to take the 7-6 lead. But the Whippets persevered through that adversity late in the ball game. The Whippets survived some missed opportunities in the fourth, fifth, and sixth when they had runners in scoring position in the fourth and the fifth. Double play, ground balls ended the inning for the Whippets. And then in the sixth, they had two on in scoring position with just one out and then back-to-back pop-ups to the shortstop ended the threat in the six. The Whippets are just so close to retaking the lead, but they kept battling and then got that leadoff man on and started getting runners around. It was a good afternoon and a good win for the Whippets to pick up their ninth victory of the season. Riley Patton is the winner today. He went Two and two-thirds innings. Will Carter, the starter, went four and a third and battled well. 
got off to a rocky start, but uh, really, really uh, pitched well in the second, the third, and the fourth inning. Uh, kept things together for the Whippets over that stretch. And so a good job of Saturday pitching by Will Carter. And Riley Patton gets the win. He is, let me make sure that that's right. I believe he's, that's his first win of the season. It is. He's 1 0 on the season. Losing pitcher today is Martavius Wynn for Ridgeland, who falls to 10 and 8 on the season. Final line score eight runs on 10 hits, one error for the victorious Whippets, seven runs on eight hits, and six errors for Ridgeland. Most of those were in the first, in fact, they were all in the first four innings of play. So they really struggled early on. They struggled with this uh, sunny field or sunny sky, I should say, and some short pop, pop flies really gave them trouble. Kept some of the Whippet uh, at bats, or excuse me, kept the Whippet innings going, and they were able to convert those into runs. So Ridgeland really hurt themselves early in the ball game, but then the last three innings, they didn't commit any errors. So it's a, an 8 7 win for the Whippets today. Take a look at the Whippet lineup. Uh, hard a couple of players with multiple base hits. Nolan Ewell had a couple of singles today. Larson Fancher had a couple as well. He came within just a few feet of a grand slam home run um, in the fifth inning, just a little bit to the right of the foul pole in the right field corner. That was nearly a one to remember. But uh, the Whippets get a good 8-7 walk-off win today, and it's time to name our Autumn Ridge Dental player of the game. And uh, looking at the – Pitching stats and looking at the offensive stats, you got to come up with your leadoff hitter, Kalen Powell, who came through again today for the second time this year. Kalen is your Autumn Ridge Dental player of the game. He hits two doubles on a three-for-four day. He reached base four times out of his five plate appearances and scored three runs. Kalen Powell hitting above 550 on the season and certainly improved that batting average today. And his double in the seventh inning really set the Whippets up for the opportunity to get the ground out, uh, the uh, RBI ground out, and then the Ethan Woods sack fly to win the ball game. So Kalen Powell is today's Autumn Ridge Dental player of the game, Autumn Ridge Dental. Now that's something to smile about. Before we sign off here, we'll take a look at the schedule, set things up for you. As far as uh, the next week's activity goes for this Whippet Baseball Club, they'll play again on Tuesday, Tuesday, April 6th. Big district game over in Meridian at Northeast Lauderdale. 7 o'clock first pitch. We'll bring you an audio broadcast of that ball game on Breezy 101. And also a uh, return game on Friday. Northeast Lauderdale comes to the fairgrounds, the two-game series. Then the next game is a week from today. The Whippets will hit the road. They'll be at Eupora. That's a return game from a February ball game. The Whippets lost here to Eupora 11-7 in the second ball game of the year. So they'll head up to Webster County and play a 2 o'clock game next Saturday. No broadcast for that one. But Whippets and Northeast Lauderdale. Audio broadcast Tuesday evening at 7. Then on Friday, Audio and the Pickles Drug Store video stream from the fairgrounds Friday at 7. So that's a lot to look forward to. The Whippets are having a good season, getting better week to week, and um, coming down the home stretch here of the regular season with the district title on the line. The Whippets have it all in front of them. Games against Northeast Lauderdale, who's going to finish in the top half, and also West Lauderdale, who's the favorite in the division, but this Whippet Ball Club is one to watch out for, and I know you'll want to stay with us over the next couple of weeks and enjoy the last part of this regular season as we head toward the playoffs. Don't forget to join me on Thursday as I get to talk with Coach Derek Bolin on the Serve Pro Coaches Show. That's going to be on at 7:30 during good, uh, excuse me, during the breakfast show, and on again at 3:30 in the afternoon. You can catch it anytime Thursday at breezynews.com. We'll say thank you to Donald, our studio engineer, to our producer, director, Breck Riley, to our great sales staff at Boswell Media, 
Appreciate uh, all those folks and all they do, team effort to get on the air. Just one, you, do, you just hear my voice, but a whole lot of other folks have to work hard to make this happen, and we appreciate them. So for all of them, I'm Philip Palmertree signing off from the fairgrounds where the Whippets get an 8-7 victory over Ridgeland. Until we meet again, Lord willing, on Tuesday, we'll wish you grace and peace and a happy Easter.